and three, two, one. Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on our Arduino tutorials, we're going to be talking about interrupts, or specifically external pin interrupts. So let's start with this. What is an interrupt? An interrupt is a feature of processors that allows the user to grab hold of the processor's attention. So, if you're running a piece of code, just doing calculations, say, and that you have an outside piece of hardware that needs to immediately talk to the processor to tell it something, that's what you'd use an interrupt for. More technically speaking, it's a pin that is read on every clock cycle, so that when there is a specific change on that pin, the the space in memory it's in, the code it's reading, is stored, that address is stored to the stack pointer, and then it jumps to a pre-described location by that, um, by that interrupt setup. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, that's the interrupt function, that's the basics of interrupts. External pin interrupts are interrupts on that pin. There are other interrupts on the Arduino like serial interrupts that let the communication work flawlessly. There are timing interrupts that let you do some of the cool timing functions that Arduino is taking care of for you. That sort of thing. These are external pin interrupts. And there are two pins on the Arduino that do that, but we'll talk about that in just a second. External pin interrupts have a couple of states that they read. Well, there are four. There's rising, and it's this edge on the square wave. So it's going from logic low to logic high. And it's just this edge right here. There's falling, logic high going to logic low, and again, it's just this edge. There's logic low, it's just being held low, and then change state. It's going from low to high or high to low. Doesn't matter. If there's any change, it changes. So that's it. So you're able to read the change whenever there's a change that you want to read rising falling change state low state whatever you can jump to a specific line in code so that's what we're going to do now if you watched my arduino project challenge with the reaction timer you can use interrupts for that so that's what we're going to do so what this is is it's the code i had for the arduino project challenge I've gone ahead and modified it though, and I'm going to go ahead and take you through what it's doing. So, in order to use interrupts, you have to use a method called attach interrupt. And there are two pins I said on the Arduino, Uno at least. Those are pins 2 and pins 3. But they're not called pins 2 and pins 3 when you're talking about attach interrupt. They're 0 and 1, 0 for 2 and 1 for 3. It's a little confusing, but hey um if you were using a mega you have four pins to choose from or sorry you've got an additional four to choose from pins 21 20 19 and 18 but i'm well, i've only got nuno so those are the only two i care about uh the four states low change rising and falling and the function which is um, technically referred to the I as the ISR, the interrupt service routine. We'll talk about that when we talk about go back into the code. Note, these are often important. Inside the attached function, delay won't work, and the value returned by millis will not increment. So millis is the current status of the millisecond timer for the amount of time your program's been running. And your serial data received while in the function may be lost. Here's why. As I mentioned, delay, millis, serial data, all use interrupts. Calling interrupts within interrupts is bad. It doesn't work. It confuses the processor. It gets crazy. So, got to remember that. Oh, and if you're using a global variable, which is referenced within the ISR, your, um, what do you call it, interrupt function, you have to declare it as volatile. Why? What happens if you've got two functions trying to access the same variable at the same time? That's bad. So volatile kind of takes care of that. 
and it takes care of a few other things that are a little complicated and make my head hurt trying to think about. Okay, let's get into the code. So I've gone ahead and defined a variable start that keeps track of when we started timing. I set up the serial, I set pin 13 as the LED to let you know when to push the button. Um, I'm using attach input 0, which is, is actually pin 2 on the board. I've set that as an input, I've set it I've set the pull up so I don't have to worry about floating junk. Uh, I've seeded a random number generator with the amount of time it's taken to get to this point. I wait a random amount of time from one to three seconds. After that wait, I turn on the LED. Now's the time you've got to push the button. So here I've attached the interrupt. That's just a time saving measure to make sure the data is more accurate. Someone commented on that, so that's. I'm trying to make this a little more accurate for them. So attach interrupt 0, that's pin 2. React, that's the function, as defined down here, void react. That's really all you have to do. You just got to name a function. And the edge, falling. Now, I say falling because I've used the pull up. When I use the pull up, it's pulled it up to 5 volts, logic high, and when I push the switch, it's going to pull it down to ground. So it's going to go from logic high to logic low. I set the start timer. So when I push the button, it jumps to react. Now, when I'm not pushing the button, it's within the main loop. And it's just looping. And it's just going to wait for that interrupt. When that happens, the variable fin is reads the current time, and then it prints it out, and it does that calculation here. Now I can hear what you're saying you've called millis within your interrupt function yes and here's why I can do that it's not in the function does millis doesn't increment within the function so if I written I've written millis here and if I were to also write millis at the bottom of the function I wouldn't see a change by calling it at the top I'm reading the state it was at as it jumped into the function it might be off by a fraction of a millisecond but that's okay because all I have here is millisecond accuracy so that's where it's okay and serial print I'm not reading into the data I'm just printing out which isn't that big a deal because I'm already within the in that interrupt function everything's good okay so I go ahead and upload this to the board I'm gonna pull it over here open up the serial monitor like I'm on, push it and there's my reaction time 334 milliseconds and that's it now there is a little issue I wanted to address and I'm gonna see if I can make it there it is okay this is called bouncing let me explain to you what bouncing is. I am not a computer, and I'm going to assume that if you're watching this, you're not a computer either. Meaning that when I push this switch, there's no guarantee that when I push it, it's not going to go all the way down the first time. Or this manufacturing of the switch is not going to cause it to bounce up and down a couple times. So what you're seeing here is a jump from 5 volts to low, and then a little bit of a jump back up above the logic threshold and then back down and a little bit up above the logic threshold again and then back down. That's bouncing. Now this is all happening within a fraction of a couple milliseconds. It's not happening over a long span. So what we can do is we can actually take care of that using an external timing variable. Or, because this is a single shot program, we can do it another way. Uh, when I say single shot, it mean, what I mean is I push this button, I want the program to end. I don't care about the interrupts anymore. So I can actually just say detach interrupts interrupt on pin 0 or sorry, interrupt pin 0, pin 2. Now if I do this again, I won't see that. So this is just one way if you don't care about interrupts anymore. You just need it for a single shot. So if I run this again, wait for the LED, there it is, 
No issue. Run it again. Wait for the LED. No issue. That's one way. If I get rid of this, this is where I've got to del delay that, uh, set that volatile. Volatile. Volatile long. Last button push. That's not push. Can I say volatile without it getting angry at me? Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, so. Volatile last button push. So what I can say is if the difference between the lat the time we're at now at the button push is greater than some threshold, say a hundred milliseconds. Then I can go ahead and do this stuff. Last button push equals fin. And that's updating the timer. So if I upload this again, and I wait for the LED to light up. Oh, still got a bit of a debouncing issue. Let's see if I can fix that. If in minus last button push is greater than 100, then it prints that out. Let's make this bigger. See if that fixes it. And serial monitor, LED. There we go. Now, the issue is I can still push the button and have it work. So that's where that detach interrupt helpfulness comes in. Oop. But I don't really, if you want it to be able to repeat that, again, I'm showing you the detach interrupt works for this because I only care about the interrupt for one instance to get one calculation. This is helpful if you need that interrupt more than once. If you need to keep calling a button push to grab its attention or some state change to grab its attention, this is a better means to calculate it. So that's a good way to do it. That's a way to remove debout. That's a way to remove bouncing. So that's really it when it comes to external pin interrupts. I'll see if I can write something on timing interrupts for the Arduino. It's going to be a little trickier because normally that's an AVRC thing. But I'll see if I can make it work for this. So um, I'm going to post this code. I'm going to start posting uh, my codes and notes. I probably won't post the notes for this because it's not really necessary. But if you want to, I can. But I'll, yeah, I'll post the codes for this. I'll put that link in the description. And if you, again, if you guys have any suggestions on what you'd like me to cover, topics, questions, suggestions, love to hear it. Put them in the comments. I'll read them. You know I do. So, that's it. So, this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.